Hi guys, welcome to yet another lecture on your JavaScript course. Now in this lecture, we are going to be talking about JSON objects. I know we already saw the JSON objects in the data types lecture. Now we'll go a little bit more in detail in the JSON objects video, where we will cover a lot more details about how objects are. So first and foremost, JSON objects are always surrounded by curly braces. Now JSON objects are also written in key value pairs. Keys must be strings and values must be valid JSON data type, which is either a string, a number, an object, an array, a boolean or null. Now keys and values are usually separated by a colon. Each key value pair is separated by a comma. So let's quickly go ahead and see this example. So let's say you have a variable my object is equals to the way you define the object is you put the curly braces and then the key has to be a string. So let's say name and the value has to be one of the valid data types. So in this scenario, it's a string. Let's also add number, which is age. I know this is a very common example that I'll keep repeating. So let's say age. And then once we have the age, let's also give, uh, let's say maybe car, like if I have a car or no. So, well, no car, <laughs> that's a null. And of course, once we have this object created, I think we should be good with three items. Once we have the object created, we can use this object as we want. In the previous example, we saw that we did a console log of my object in that scenario. It was an X variable. Let's say if we do this, let's open the console, close the output, run the function, and you will see the object got outputted. Now there is one cool thing about accessing the object values in a JSON file. So what you can do is to access something in your JSON, you usually use a dot notation. So what you will do is you will do, let's say if you just want to print out the name, what you will do is instead of my object, you will do a my object name. Let's say I run this again and the answer should be just John. Similarly, if you want age, you can do age. Let's run it again and you should see the I age as 30. Now you can also access the object objects value rather by using bracket notation. So rather than doing dot age, what you can do is you can have a bracket around it, just like you access an array. And let's say I clear the console and I run it. Okay. Age is not defined. It has to be a string of course, so that you can run it. Let's clear it, run it. And the answer is 30. Similarly, if you want name, let's make sure that we also have it in string, run it. And you should see John onto the screen. So that is a very easy way you can either access object using a dot notation or you can access using the box brackets. Now, what if you want to loop an object? Well, you can loop uh, through the object properties by using the foreign loop. Let me show it to you quickly. So let's say I have this object and I, I have, uh, you know, multiple contents in the object. You can see there are three keys out here, name, age, and car. Now, if I need to access them by looping, so what I will do is you can just do a for let's say X in my object. So that's your variable, which will hold the value. Now, once you have X, all you need to do is let's say either you can do a console log or let's say we put it onto the screen. So let's do a document dot get element by ID. I think I already have a demo. So this demo can be used. So let's say the key is demo. Let's say inner HTML. So that way you update the inner HTML and you say plus equals to X. So what this will do is it will print out all the values onto your output, which is out here. Let's run with JS. So as you can see on the screen, you can see name, age and car. The keys got printed again. This is not the best way of doing it. You can also do a console.log of, you know, the X value. So you can have multiple values printed onto the screen. Let's run with JS. You can see name age card got updated here, which was the inner HTML and name age card of course got printed and you were also printing the name. So the John got also printed onto the screen. So that's very easy to actually, you know, use uh, these uh, loop so that you can loop through the entire object and get the keys. Now it might happen that you might have an array of, uh, you know, elements, let's say my family. So you can have family and let's say you have it as an array and you can have the family members. So let's say name. Well, you can just make it an array. So Abhai, let's say spouse. Uh, okay. And let's also say child. So these are the items that we have in the family. Let's clear it up. 
let's run now you should start seeing family got appended here family got displayed here and if you want to access the array it is very easy the way you will do it instead of name you will say family which will be nothing but an array object so let's clear the screen run it once again so you can see the array got outputted onto the screen that was easy isn't it now in the for loop you can use bracket notations to access the property values too so just like you accessed you know uh, by default you just used X you can also use bracket notations let me show it to you so instead of doing the key which is name age car family what we can do is we can actually display the values so what you will do is my object and then put a box around the X so let's put a box around X and then when you run the uh, whole JavaScript you will see that John 30 null and the value got printed so rather than the keys the value get outputted when you use the box brackets okay now one super cool thing about JSON objects is let me actually close the console so you can see something onto the screen properly so let me also increase the font size okay so now one cool thing about the JSON objects is you can have objects within an object so one json key like in this scenario let's say i have another instead of car as null i can actually have another object altogether and this object can be again a name value pair so let's say uh, car one and the value could be let's say ford similarly you can have car two which is another car that i might have and it might be a bmw and let's say car three that's the last car I'm going to add because I cannot uh, park them. I have limited parking space. So let's say RAV4, which is a Toyota. Now, what will happen is when you actually output onto the screen, everything remains the same. If you see the console, you run it again. You will see the object itself printed out, which is the cars. Now, what you can do is when you have something like a JSON within a JSON or a JSON holding the object altogether in this scenario, it's just an object. In this scenario, you can access anything that you want using the dot operator. So just like you have my object family, you can do cars. So once the, the way you had family, you can get the car. And once you get the car object, you can actually do a car one. Let's go to the console. Let's run and let's see what happens. So you get the answer as four. And that was easy, right? You don't have to use the box brackets all the time. You can also use just uh, the dot annotations if you want to but again it's a choice so that way you can actually use the box brackets to uh, get the output onto the screen there's also another approach that you might be interested in so there are other ways of accessing this object altogether what you can do is just like you have cars you can remove this you can just have a dot separator and you can still access ford you can see ford got printed out two times let me run it again so you can see it Ford got printed out two times now there's also another thing you can either rather than doing a uh, car car one you can also put a box annotation which means rather than doing a dot you can put it a car one again you need to make sure that it's a string so put it into the double quotes now let's clear and now you should see the Ford displayed three times because all these three are very much the same and the way you access the object doesn't uh, matter on how you approach it but you can still get the same output using either of this so one is you can use the box annotation which is the box brackets or a, or a period to actually fetch the values now that was all from this lecture like the json objects now if you have any questions around this or probably something was not clear let me know in the q a section or in the comments below and as usual i will see you in the next class